Okay, so we're ready for chapter 37 of the Wish Tree. And remember, in chapter 37, we are still kind of taking a flash backwards. And we are talking about Maeve. And Maeve is the Irish immigrant who in the neighborhood is basically the neighborhood nurse. And she is taking care of everybody in the neighborhood. She's the person to make the very first wish and tie that piece of fabric onto the tree. And she made a wish to not be lonely anymore. People would leave thank you notes and different things in the hollow of the tree for her. But then one day, who remembers what was left in the hollow of that tree for her? And that is where we are starting today, chapter 37. Many in the neighborhood didn't approve of an unmarried Irish woman raising an abandoned Italian baby. People talked as if they will, and they tisked, tisked as they must. Some people were even angry. They said hurtful things. They told Maeve and Amadora they didn't belong together. They told Maeve she and the baby should leave. Maeve merely smiled held Amadora close and waited and hoped. On dark nights, when hope was scarce, she would sing an old Irish tune mixed with a newer Italian song that she had heard from the neighbor. The melody was sweet, the words were silly, the effect was always the same, a smile from little Alma. Sure enough, the longer Maeve waited, the kinder people grew, and people before long, Alma, as she came to be called, was much a part of our messy garden as all the rest of us. When Amma was old enough to feed Squibbles and his family, she did. When she was strong enough to climb me, she did. And when she was ready to make wishes of her own, she did. Amma grew up steady and honest and kind, like her mother and her babies of her own, and then her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. Eventually, Alma and her husband bought a little brown house and the one right next to it and painted them blue and green. Years later, they purchased a house across the street and began to rent the blue and green houses to other families. The family grew and prospered and argued and failed and loved and laughed. Always and forever, the laughter kept them going. And when Alma's grandson had a little girl, he chose a fine Italian name for her with a fine Irish middle name, Francesca Maeve. So I hope, boys and girls, you remember who Francesca is. As for me, my reputation grew. Hadn't Maeve's wish come true in the heart of the wish tree? Didn't that mean anything was possible? Of course, as Squibbles often reminded me, I'd had nothing to do with it. This isn't a fairy tale, Red, he would say, but people are full of longings. And a decade after and a decade after, the hopes kept coming. A blessing and a burden it has been in all those wishes and all those years, but everyone needs hope. So now we're back to chapter 39, and I hope you remember where we are. Stephen and Samar are both standing there shocked because who is speaking? Chapter 39. At long last, I stopped talking. Once the words had spilled out, it was like trying to stop the wind. In the silence that followed, I felt as if the whole world was holding its breath. I'd broken the rule. Stephen and Samar still stared open-mouthed at me. They looked as rooted into the ground as I was. Neither had uttered a sound while I told my story. The front door of Stephen's house opened. Stephen, called his father. What the heck are you doing, young man? Stephen leapt to his feet. I, I, here I come, Dad. Um, night, Samar. Night, Stephen, she said. Stephen dashed towards the porch, but stopped halfway. He spun around to look at me. Thanks, he said in a quizzical voice using the same tone he might have used if Bongo had just made him pancakes. The door slammed behind him. 
Samar stood holding her blanket to her chest. I know I must be dreaming, she said. She headed to her own porch and eased open the door. I just wish, she added with a smile, that I didn't have to wake up.